And uh, John and I really connected here when I came back to Austin just a couple months ago. He asked me to help out with the book, and uh, it's been a it's been such a fun ride ever since. I've I've read the book a couple of times now, and I I promise you guys that it it delivers. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it really is a powerful book. But uh, just the last couple things about me: you heard, uh, born and raised in Chicago, and a bit of a nomad. So I kind of hop from from country to country, city to city. So hopefully get a chance to connect with some of you guys in your hometown when I come through. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> on, on tour, my tour of the world right now. And uh, I guess my, mainly I wanted to say that I am here to, to help get you guys as much information as possible, but also to, to, to serve you in any way possible. So make sure that you are reaching out through the Facebook group, send me a personal message, whatever you need to do. If, you, if you're not the type of person that loves to shout from the rooftops in the group, and if you are, we want you to. But if you're not, by all means, feel free to, to send me a personal message and I will, I will do whatever I can to make sure that you're getting the information uh, that you need and that uh, we're, we're all on the same page here as we help John spread his message and it's a powerful one. Well, I guess I want to tell you, Ramon lives life in the front row. I'll never forget getting a picture, back-to-back -back photos. One was <laughs> Ramon running with the bulls <laughs> with his hands up in the air. It's, it's one of the all-time, I think, epic front row pictures. And then another one of like him standing in front of Machu Picchu with his uh, striking a front row pose. Very early on in the, um, in, the, in the charity was very inspiring to me to see people going and living the message. So I wanna thank Ramon for that. And uh, Emeka, can we just take uh, another couple seconds here and introduce you? I wanna get into the uh, call right away, but I want people to know uh, the role that you're playing. And, and, and actually, I wanna set this up real quick. I asked Emeka to join our team because Emeka has experience uh, publishing books. And, um, but maybe tell everybody where you live and a little bit about your family. That's the most exciting stuff. <laughs> Sounds good, everyone. Uh, hey, it's nice to um, meet uh, all of you for the first time here. Um, I'm originally from Canada. Me and John, we go uh, way back. Um, grew up in Vancouver, Canada. I am currently down in Monterey, Mexico. My wife is from Monterey, and we had a little baby girl last year in August and decided to move down here, and uh, just we stayed down here. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. And uh, I'm working behind the scenes with, uh, with John, just uh, helping, um, helping this book get the best launch possible. We wanna do some big things with, um, with this book and what it'll do for the charity and help just inspire and um, as many people as possible to live in the front row. So I'm kind of the behind the scenes the guy, but I'm on Facebook. If you guys have any questions or anything at all, reach out to me. I'm, I'm more than happy to help or serve in any way that I can. One of the most important things I want to let everybody know is that this is not, an, uh, it's not my book. It's our book. And there is no person who's ever written and published and created a best-selling book by themselves. It's literally a massive team effort. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge each and every one of you for playing a role in making that happen because you know, I, I, when I'm, I'm so appreciative when somebody says something about whether or not they got connected to the charity because we were friends or that they wanted to help me to move forward because I certainly understand that. There's many friends that I want to help them as individuals. But what I also want us to recognize is that beyond any one person, including myself, this is a, this is a book that I hope we all believe has the potential to positively impact anybody that picks it up and reads any of the words that are written on those pages. And why I think the book is so brilliant, and I can say with confidence that I stand behind this book 100% and say this is a game changer for people is because it's not all my thoughts. It's not like I sat down and wrote, what brilliance do I have to share with the world because I somehow have been gifted with all this knowledge. I'm telling stories. I'm a witness. I watched people with the most incredible mindsets stepping up in their lives and, and delivering big. And so I'm just a reporter in many ways. Um, and I've, I've, of course, put my own spin on it. And I've, I've shared my thoughts about life and uh, what I've seen in my experience. But this whole thing has been a we, this has been a we thing in a major way. And I want you to feel witnessed, acknowledged, appreciated, and loved because I do love you very, very much. And I, I say this in all my speeches, and I'll say this to you now, that there are two types of people I see in the world. One are the people I know and love, 
And the others are the people I love, but I've yet to know. And some of you fall into that camp where we don't know each other yet, but um, I love you because you're stepping up to create something, not because you'll help me to sell more books or help the Front Row Foundation to sell more books, but that because you want to leave the world a little better than you found it and to perpetuate a message that you believe in. So I want to say thank you. You know, when I think about why this book um, and why this message is important, we're going to get into that in just a second because in a moment, I'm going to hand the mic over to Nina and it looks like Nina's on the go. But I asked Nina earlier today if she would share a little bit of her story. And I think that what you'll find with Nina's story is it's, it's a perfect example of what it means to live the front row message. And when I think about the work that we do, and I've said this in many ways on podcasts and in, in, in different uh, spaces in my life, but I said, I think the work we do changes the world just as much as any other work that anybody else does that they feel passionately about. I don't think you can measure good deeds. I don't think you can say that this was more powerful than that. I think when you find your best and deliver it to the world, that's what the world needs. You know, um, there's an old quote that says, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do that because what the world needs is for people who've come alive. And this book is all about people coming alive and celebrating all of the moments that they have in life. And so I think that this book is of critical importance. And I think that what you're doing today is literally has the power to save the world. I mean, you think about that, that you know, this isn't just something we're going to do, like a little action because we were, because we didn't know what else to do with our time or because we just took that step forward. But to really feel the power that what we're about to do could potentially shape, uh, you know, the, the course of humanity forever. That's a fun thought. And that's not to overinflate our importance. That's to recognize the importance of you and your impact on the world. Because it's not an ego thing, it's knowing that we're part of a whole system and that the message that we perpetuate can be a, a very powerful one. So guys, the book is almost done. I wanna tell you very quickly that we are, uh, we're in the final stages. As of Monday, it'll get sent to formatting. So this week we're doing some, some tuning up with our small editing team. And then by about March 15th, you'll have the book in your hands to read. It'll be complete and final. On February 28th and about 10, uh, 14 days, sorry, um, we, will, we will be uh, pumping out the book as a, like, hey, pre-order the book now. That's the, kind of our public announcement to the pre-order is February 28th. And anything you could do to get the word out there would be great. Um, March 28th is the big one. And that's where we officially launch and everybody can go and they can get a copy and they can write a review. And so everybody on this call it will be of critical importance that we all just go and write a review that day so that we can start climbing the ranks in Amazon and they'll start helping the book to grow. But by that point, it will be an authentic review because you'll have read the book and that's what we want. We want you to read and experience the book. Um, but Nina, we're gonna transition to you right now because, uh, and, and I'm gonna just tee this up one last time. Nina has been living the front row message because uh, months ago, four months ago or so, Nina, five months ago, you, Nina was at an event in Cleveland. We had a front row summit and we brought in some of our favorite people to co-create the future of Front Row Foundation. And how many people were there, Nina? Was it about? I think about 30. Yeah, about 30 right, people. 35. Mm -hmm. We had recipients and donors and staff and board members and everybody came together. And it was, it was a magical experience on many levels. Our friend Jeff Hoffman came in. And Jeff is, a, uh, is the co-founder of Priceline. <laughs> he has built and sold three companies north of $100 million. Priceline now is valued at $70 billion or something. So yeah. um, Jeff is a really fascinating guy, and he loves the Front Row Foundation. And he came in to this small group. And he even auctioned off some of his time to four people who paid to buy an hour lunch with him and all the money went to Front Row Foundation. He raised like $20,000 in like 60 seconds. It was, it was so awesome. But what happened at that event was that Nina made a commitment and that commitment has now been an inspiration for many other people. And what Nina is about to share is of critical importance to everybody listening because it's going to tie into what we talk about in a moment. So Nina, can you just tell us the story and take us through what happened at that event where you made a commitment and what's happened since then? 
Okay, so, um, well, the event was amazing, and at the end of the event, we had a nice circle, and I think the question was, how are you going, what action are you going to take um, that will uh, make you feel like you're living life in the front row? And so, at the, at the moment, I thought it has to be something that I do on a daily basis, and I want it to be something with my son, and so we decide, I decided just to say, okay, I'll do a daily front row moment ritual with Gavin and uh, for six months and I didn't really realize the magnitude of that um, but I thought it'd be something fun I, I thought that it had to be a daily thing for us to really experience what it is um, to live life in the front row because I I believe that uh, you to, to you know do anything you have to make it part of your life and um, for that you have to immerse yourself but people think immersion is like a big thing like a, you know 20 30 minutes a day or whatever but it really doesn't have to be it could be a one minute a day and that's been scientifically proven like if you do one minute a day of meditation it's more effective than 20 minutes you know three times a week and so I knew it had to be a daily ritual and um, and yeah I just wanted more connection with my son and more connection to the front row so um, that's where the idea started and uh, yeah, we're on day 157, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. And Nina, I want to I wanna honor Nina publicly here and say that uh, I'm just such a fan, not only of Nina and her energy and the spirit she brings to, to life, but the way that she's tied this back to the Front Row Foundation has started to inspire other people uh, to the point to where you had a friend that started doing this. Yeah, so I had another mom friend that uh, we were just connected on Facebook. I haven't seen in a couple of years and she started saying that she loved our little moments every day and that she and her three kids were going to were going to do this. And um, they went for uh, 44 days in a row and then she stopped for a little while and the kids themselves, they said, Mom, Mom, we need, I want to do the front row again. So they're back starting again. I think they're on day 10 or 11. Um, but it was the kids that ask, asked Mom to to do it again and I think that is so lovely that's so beautiful and Nina tell I was we shared a story this morning that I thought was also great can you talk about how and we were talking about how the language uh, becomes something that initially people are confused they're like what's a front row moment and in some ways that's a good thing because it creates a conversation right and, yeah. uh, and, and now that you've been doing it for a while, uh, it seems that people in your community now understand what a front row moment is. And now they're telling you, and they're using that language in describing things to you because you got totally. a message from somebody. So Nina owns a yeah. dance studio in Vancouver and she's an amazing dance instructor. Uh, and you had, was it a student that said this? Yeah. So so yeah, in the beginning when I started posting a front row, people are like, what is this thing that you're doing? What is this front row foundation and, I, and life? And, and so um, everybody started asking me what it was and I started describing to pretty... Um, oh, Nina, I think we lost you. Are you there, Nina? You know, very shy. Um, yeah, you know, lady, and I made her spin, and she sent me a message, and she said, what a front row moment that was, Nina, when I spun three spins in front of everybody, and uh, yeah, she was really, really happy, and I thought, oh, that's great, she, she knows what a front row moment is, and, and um, yeah, it was amazing for her, so, so everybody around me, they'll be like, Nina, you know, they'll, they will talk to me, like, I'm your last front row moment, or this was a front row moment for me, uh, and they send me messages, and um, and it's amazing how it, it, people that I don't know, their parents are. I, I got a message from a friend, um, yeah, from a friend of a friend. I didn't know this person, and he said that he was out, and the parents of his friend showed him a video of Gavin and I reciting a poem, and that it, the parents were really touched that their son was making such an impact uh, on the world and that I had a video with my son. And, and so I just thought, you just, just don't know how it just, um, it snowballs and uh, the ramifications of just a little thing, you know, it's just daily photos or videos. And Gavin and I, it's just part of our fun times together. Like, you know, it's, it's not much effort. Yeah. It's, it's really fun for us. 
Guys, I want to explain that one of the big concepts of the book, and you may gather this from the title, it's the front row factor, transform your life with the art of moment making. And so one of the things we have to understand is when I say moment making, it's like, what do I mean by a moment? Right? What is a front row moment? And we, Nina, can you still hear? Guys, can you hear me okay? Amecca, no, give sorry. me a thumbs up to, if you I'm can hear me. I'm moving around just to find the... Okay, cool. There. Now I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. So when we're talking about what is a front row moment, you know, a front row moment is okay. a moment that matters. A front row moment is a, a hands up moment, as Andrew Smallwood calls it. Uh, a front row moment is a yes moment. We're like, yes, that's awesome. And it's a moment that counts for us. It's a, you know, it's, it's a moment in time that we want to capture. Uh, Nina and I were talking earlier today about what are the questions that she asks herself uh, as she goes throughout the day to capture these front row moments or what for her is the definition of a front row moment. Nina, can you share uh, just a little bit of your experience of like, what is that moment for you? Yeah, so um, there's some that are very obvious where I'm just like, this is a front row moment that I want to, I don't, I don't want to miss and I, it's obvious and I'm like, I don't want to capture this. And so I take a quick picture. Um, but then sometimes we're, we're I'm doing simple things and then I just ask Gavin, is this a front row moment? And um, he will turn around and he, he might say like, yes, because of whatever. And, or he might tell me like, this is a front row moment, mom. And, and um, so, uh, yeah, sometimes I ask, is this a front row moment? Is this the moment where I'm feeling, well, where I can see something that is, um, I like to say like magical in the mundane um, and, and yeah. Yeah. I think so, that what'll be fun is for each person who's experiencing this to determine for themselves what a front row moment is, because there's so many ways that we could look at it. You know, a front row moment could be standing and looking at a sunset. A front row moment could be watching your kids play and smile and laugh. Uh, a front row moment could be just about anything in your life where you're just recognizing the beauty of it. It could be appreciating something so simple. You know, people talk to me about how sometimes they have these moments where they're just sitting at dinner feeling fully appreciative of the safety that they, they have in their life, the security, the, the family, the food, or whatever it might be, just feeling like uh, that appreciation is a front row moment. And so uh, the, the essence of the book <coughs> is to teach people how to create these front row moments. And one of the things that I've seen about Nina and why mm -hmm. I wanted to share, to share the story was that... Nina's doing it. Like Nina's living the book and Nina's being a moment maker in her life and she's sharing it and it's impacting other people. So we want to help everybody on this call to help us to share the message of the book, but not by promoting it, but by living the message. So I want to say that again. I think that's really important is that what's so unique about this launch team over any other launch team is that we're not just going to promote an idea. We're going to live the idea. And then we're going to let people be inspired by us living out the idea. And the idea of being in the front row of your life is being close to the people and the places and the things that inspire us, that make us come alive. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about in the book, we, we break down lots of different aspects about living a front row life, but we talk about the power of hoping for something to happen. We talk about the power of being in the moment while it's happening. And we talk about the power of celebrating moments that happen. We're going to live that together in the next eight days. We're going to invite you to play with us on a game that we're going to start tomorrow. And I'll explain what that is. And, and in the book, I talk about three, what I call the three focus areas of living an amazing life. And one of those focuses is, is where do we focus our attention? What questions do we focus on? What ideas do we focus on? In the book, we're going to talk about relationships and how we live life with the right people to help us create more front row moments and how we have an impact on people. And we talk about environment, like where we are and what we recognize about what makes us come alive and putting us in places where we can have front row moments in our lives. Well, you'll get the book and you'll, you'll be able to read about all that. And it's fascinating stories and it's riveting like uh you know science behind it because these research uh, uh experiments that we share are incredible and then we talk about some practical strategies and one of the strategies is to help people to rewire the way they think about life and what makes our front row community so unique and different is that we're helping people rewire 
the way they approach their lives. And let me give you an example of what a reframe is or a different way of looking at something. So we created a front row event for a woman just about a month ago and her name is Nikki. And Nikki and her husband, I took them to a Dallas Cowboys game. And props to Kelly and Bex who set up all the details and all I did was show up and, and basically take her to the game. Uh, Kelly and Bex who are here on the call, they, they, they do the hundreds of hours of work prep before and after the event to make it all happen. I was privileged enough to be riding in the limousine with Nikki and asking her questions about her life. And she, she was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer and was going through chemo and radiation and she had lost her hair. And sometimes she wears a hat when she goes out in public, but she said in this particular moment, she was telling me a story about how she went out in public and people would look at her with disgust. And the minute she said that, my heart broke and I got very sad for a moment until she said, and it makes me very happy for them. And it was like, if somebody were to just scratch the record and I was like, what do you mean it makes you happy? And she said, it makes me happy because in order for them to look at me with disgust, that must mean that they have never gone through this themselves and they have never known anybody in their life to battle with this because if they had, they would never be looking at me that way. So she goes, I'm happy that they have no frame of reference for this. And I just thought to myself, oh my gosh, like that's the most incredible perspective on life. Like she took what could have been anybody would have been justified being angry, upset, sad, whatever, totally justified. And she found happiness in that. And I thought, you know, when we write the book, we're sharing stories about people who bring an incredible mindset to life. And what we want to do is we want to train our community. I want to train myself to be somebody that recognizes the beauty of life, to, to see it in the way that uh, changes our experience. And that's the front row factor. It's like, what thoughts do we put ourselves close to? What people, what events? So here's the game. All right. Is everybody ready for the game? Give me a thumbs up. All right, cool. Here's the game. This is going to be an invitation for an eight day experiment starting tomorrow. And the experiment is to do what Nina just described. And so everybody on this uh, call and everybody who will watch the replay and everybody that will tell will be able to for eight days document front row moments in your life. And again, like I explained, a front row moment could be just a moment that matters. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Smallwood calls that the, the hands up moment when you're like, you just wanna throw your hands up like, yes. Or it could be something very subtle, very simple, just to wear a quiet, yes, this is awesome. A moment of appreciation, but a moment that counts for you. That's a front row moment. And uh, if you want examples of that, you can go search for the hashtag front row moment. And you can, so go to Facebook, go to Instagram, plug in hashtag front row moment and find examples of people living life in the front row and creating moments. And you may be inspired by their moment. You might say, oh, that's a great moment. I didn't see that as an opportunity of being a front row moment, but I'm going to take that and I'm going to find that tomorrow in my life. But so we all will be doing this and sharing that with one another. Now, the second thing that you might be asking is, well, what would support me or how can I remind myself or how can I find the, how can I create the habit of doing this front row moment because the biggest thing is that we want to change the habit for an individual because listen if we want to change our lives we have to change our habits because when our habits change our lives change and so we want to look at what habits we want to change so the habit would be this we want to create a habit that would help you to create or to recognize magical front row moments in your life and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to ask three types of questions as a community and I'll show you how you can remember to do this. But here's the questions. There's a morning question. So first thing every day, you're going to ask yourself, what front row moments can I create today? Or you could ask, what would a front row life look like today? However you want to phrase the question, it's a future focused, hope driven, intentionally designing your day. How am I going to respond? How am I going to show up? How will I create front row moments? We're just going to, it could take you literally just half a second to think about the answer for that. You don't even have to think about the answer because when you ask the question, your brain wants to find the answer. It'll work in the background. It'll, your subconscious is going crazy trying to figure it out. So what front row moments will you create today or can you focus on today? 
what would a front row day look like? A second type of question is an in the moment question. It's all throughout the day. You can be asking yourself, how do we make the most of this moment? Like, how can you recognize this as being a front row moment? How can we amplify this moment? And I'll give you a practical example. So at lunch today for Valentine's Day with my wife, uh, we were talking about the book and she asked me about it, how it was going. And I told her about this call that we were going to be doing. And I, I was explaining the concept of the front row moment. I was talking about Nina and I was talking about all this that we've already just discussed. And she, and because of that, we were leaving the restaurant and she took a feedback card and she commented about our waiter because it was fresh in her mind. She wrote a thank you card to the waiter, commented on his service and created a front row moment for him. And in doing so created a front row moment for us. So it was as simple as that. It was in discussion and it changed our behavior and it changed his life, right? And who knows what, because we maybe changed his mood, that he might go home and be nicer to his kids or do something nice for them. And that ripple that we start, who knows where it ends? So we have these in the moment questions of how do we make this a magic moment right now? Or how do we just recognize that it's a magic moment? Because this restaurant was <coughs> decorated amazingly it was awesome, right? Like that stuff on the ceiling. And we took a moment and we just looked around and we recognized that this was a front row moment because we were in this amazing restaurant. Finally, there's the evening question. And this is the celebratory part. So at the end of the day, we just ask ourselves, we could journal about it. We could ask others around us. Many of you know, at dinner, I ask my kids like, or ask my son, my seven-year-old, and I ask my, my wife and my mother-in-law, uh, what were your front row moments today? Or if we don't do dinner, I'm laying in bed and I'm, you know, I'm usually like tickling tiger's back and I'm saying, hey, buddy, tell me like what was a front row moment today? And interestingly, uh, we do this so often that now when I say, hey, what was great about today? He'll respond by saying, my front row moment today was blank. Like I won't even prompt that. I'll just say what was great today. And he'll say my front row moment was blank. And what I love about that is that it's what makes life fun sometimes is like in a community that makes a community bond is having shared language. Like there's actually great studies about when a, when a community, when a tribe, when a group of people, when a front row family has a shared language, that's something special that's ours. And we could share other people. It's not about excluding people. It's about including people, but it's a shared language that we have. It's the way we describe and look at life. It's just slightly different and it's, it's our way. Well, what was our favorite moments of today? It gives us a chance to celebrate and sometimes, I don't know if you've ever happened, it's ever happened to you, but with my son, I'll say, hey, what were some of your front row moments today? And he'll say, I don't know. And then he'll just pause. And if I don't chime in, if I just wait a minute, I'll let that silence settle. He'll go, oh, wait a minute, I got one. And he goes, I almost forgot. And then he'll say it. And I'm like, how often does that happen in our lives where we have these amazing experiences and we almost just forget about them? See, mindfulness is about bringing attention to the things that we want to focus on. And what we focus on, we feel. And our feelings determine the quality of our lives. So we can literally, and I'm not even kidding, that we can change the way we live our lives and the lives of those around us. Just the way Nina described, influencing the people around her. We can do that. We get to live the message. Andrew Smallwood, the chairman of the board. There he is. That handsome, well, he's on my screen. He's at the bottom with that, that handsome man with the big beard. That's Andrew Smallwood, everybody. He's driving out to see his, uh, his, uh, his lovely girlfriend for Valentine's Day. And Andrew says, you know, it's, it's front row is about waking up inspired and going to bed satisfied or going to bed fulfilled. And I love that, right? What we do, our book helps people wake up inspired and go to bed fulfilled. Well, when we ask that morning question about what we're going to create, that's, that's, that's inspired. Because that's the hope for the future that brings power to the present. And when we go to bed at night and we look back at what we created that day, what progress we made, what romance we had for ourselves and others, that's celebratory. That amplifies the good so we can silence what's not. Now, to create this habit, Bex, I'm going to give you a shout out here. Bex's idea, which was brilliant, was to print this on a toothbrush. I think that's, that's so good to print the question on a toothbrush because the easiest way to form a new habit is to attach it to an existing one. That's the easiest way. So if you take a habit that you're going to do every day, no matter what, and you attach 
a new habit that you want to form to that, you've got a much better chance of it sticking. So Bex is like, let's print the question on a toothbrush. And I was like, that's great. We just got to figure out what we'll put on there and maybe that'll happen. But for now, here's <laughs> what we're going to do. We're going to create a tracker sheet. And we're calling this the eight day experiment. And the eight day experiment will have a tracker sheet, simple one page form. And I imagine the top will just say something like, you know, the eight day experiment. And then it'll be eight columns. And on the top, it would just simply be, you know, what, what, what front row moments can I create today? And we could just answer that or we could just check a box. Like we just ask the question and we're moving on. But we see that <coughs> and we check the box or we write an answer. In the evening, there's another question that says, what front row moments can I celebrate today? And then we either just check the box that we asked the question or we simply take a moment and celebrate them and we could write them down. It could be a one page journal. Now, the reason that we don't have a spot for the day is just because <coughs> many of you, we're going to keep this sheet right next to your bed to remind you first thing and last thing about this mission. And the goal is throughout the day to be asking yourself the question. Now, ideally, it would be good if you could have a reminder, like maybe a wristband, maybe a rubber band, maybe you, you write something on your hand, maybe you tape something inside your car, maybe you set a reminder in your phone to beep at you throughout the day that says, you know, can you create a front row moment right now? Or what is a front row moment occurring around you right now? Maybe you do that to pop up and share reminders throughout the day. But what I want to share with everybody is this. I believe that this is the secret sauce of life. I believe this is the ticket, pun intended, to living an amazing life. I mean, think about this. If we were to change a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand people's mindset about how they approach their day. Now, and when I say change, I'm not talking about like, they're not already living great lives or they're not already receiving great information. They might already be doing this. They don't, might already be asking these questions in the morning and creating front row moments and celebrating at night. I'm talking about just codifying it. I'm talking about defining it. Look, Hal Elrod, one of our best friends, author of The Miracle Morning, you know, he donates a portion of his sales to the Front Row Foundation. He's been one of my best buddies for the longest time. Clearly, he didn't invent visualization, reading, journaling. He certainly didn't invent morning routines but he just gave us a way to package it. He gave us a way to look at the savers in the morning that would change the way we live our lives and he created a community around it. He, he's the one who talked to me about this. He's like, this is awesome, right? Like this idea is awesome because now we teach people how to approach their day, to be a moment maker, to ask a powerful question because when we change our questions, we change our lives. We ask them an intentionally, like how are we gonna design our day? What is our intention? We, we have a question to guide us through the day, we celebrate, isn't that the secret of life? I mean, if we, if we have a community of people that have figured out how to start their day, work their day, and end their day, this is amazing. Simple, effective, habit-forming with a new language that we all can create. Final piece of this. We pick a friend to do this with. So everybody watching this video live or anybody watching this recording and anybody in our, in our launch team, which is about 145 people as of this afternoon, that we want everybody to pick one friend. Now, this is the power of everybody making one strategic move. We've taken a 140 person launch team and turned it into 280 people. Not for the bragging rights of how big our launch team is, but because if we believe in this message, then we get a chance to spread that message. That's what this is about. This isn't about selling more books. This is about changing lives in a positive way. And by the way, if at any point it doesn't feel like that's what we're doing, I would just say bow out. Like, don't, don't waste your time with us. Like, if it feels inauthentic or like our hearts aren't in the right place, just, just bow out. Go spend time with people who you do feel that way with. But I hope you feel from the bottom of my heart that that's what we want to do. I mean, this whole thing was rooted in wanting to help people live great lives. That's where, the, that's where the intention of this whole thing began. And now we just wanna help everybody do it. And we wanna give them a simple framework to be able to do this. So we want you to pick a friend, tell them what's going on, recruit them to do the eight day experiment with you because you need an accountability partner, and then make a public declaration. Like literally, Nina was saying that one of the reasons this worked, and Nina, I still see you there with us on your walk home, or to wherever you're heading. But uh, Nina said, I made a declaration and I made it to people that I did not want to let down. 
she, you know, that she was explaining that when she made this declaration that that accountability uh, was very important. Was that true, Nina? Is that, am I saying that correctly? I know, Nina, we got you on mute. Here, I'll unmute you. There you oh, go. Okay. You're, you're unmuted. Yeah. Um, yes. So, and not only was I in front of everybody that I really admired, but I, I said I would do it on Facebook. <laughs> so then that is how it really has kept me accountable. And for me, the trigger is like um, going to bed. If I haven't posted it already, like the moment I put my head on the, on the pillow, I'm like, oh, front row moment. I make sure I post it. So um, yeah. sometimes I do it right, right after and sometimes it's at the end of the night. So my post will be like at two in the morning or something. But, um, and so for everybody, my, my, my request is you try to do it every day. And what would be fun is if every night we all went in uh, and looked under the hashtag. Let's try to do as much of this on Facebook. I know some of you are on Instagram. The good news is we did a survey and 90% of you are most active on Facebook. Um, so if we do it on Facebook and we search the hashtag, we can see everybody else's front row moments and let's support each other. Like let's, uh, let's, let's, let's support each other. There's no reason that we have to post it, by the way, directly in our launch team group. We should post it on our regular page to inspire everybody around us Hashtag, hey, Gavin. Hey, buddy. Do you like doing front row moments? You do front row moments every day? Yeah. What's That's your awesome. favorite thing about it? Uh, I don't know. Okay. You can mute me again, Johnny. Sorry. Hey, 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 Gavin. It's so nice to see you, buddy. I see you every single day almost when you're doing your front row moments. Oh. Yeah, you really inspire us, buddy. Thank you so much. We'll see you, we'll see you in future You're photographs, welcome. okay? Okay. All right. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Awesome. Oh, I love him. All right, guys. So listen, uh, the deal is find a friend, do this for eight days. Now, it's an invitation. I'm not, this isn't a requirement of being part of the launch team, but we want to invite you in. I mean, here's the deal. You haven't even read the book yet. You might be like, I haven't even read the book yet. I don't even know what you're talking about. But the reality is that probably by this point of me explaining what I've explained, you get what I'm talking about. Being a moment maker is about acknowledging a moment or creating a moment, but it's about knowing that our lives are made up of just millions and millions of moments and that our, our lives improve when we can not only improve the quality of all those moments, but for the moments of everybody around us. You know, being in the front row is stemming from the idea of helping other people have a front row moment as much as it is about ourselves experiencing the moment in the front row. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a service. And so by sharing your light, I mean, Marianne Williamson said it perfectly. She says, when we let our own light shine, we give others permission to do the same. When you value your life, you teach everybody around you to value their life. It's not bragging. It's not ego. It's not look at me and look how great I am. It's letting yourself be happy so that your life can feel in a way that you deserve to feel and others can see that and be inspired to do the same. And it's not like, hey, we're happy and we're not teaching you how to be this way. Like, hey, it's I guess you just have to be me or you have to be us or you have to be, you have to know the secret. Sorry. It's like, hey, we want to tell you what it is, you know, and, 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 every, and everything in the book is our prescription to do this. So hopefully there's a, a reason that we can share this with our friends and make these front row moments together. And that can become part of our DNA, part of our shared language. It's not that our community is better than anybody else. It's just our community. It's not that our language is better than theirs. It's just our language. And we're not about trying to beat other people to compare ourselves to see if we're better or living life better than they are. It's about saying, look, guys, this is our life. We're here on this call together. We're on this Zoom call. How are we going to do this? How can we elevate one another? How can we celebrate each other? How can we ch uh, challenge each other, encourage, encourage each other? Um, we have something, uh, an ability right now in this group to do what high paid coaching groups do. Like there are groups that you could join that you'll get the same level of, you know, information and accountability as you could get here that you could pay hundreds of dollars to be a part of or thousands of dollars to be a part of. I've paid for them and I'd like to create something that is free for all of us right now to participate in and to involve other people. And by the way, when you invite somebody to do this game with you, 
feel free to invite them to join our book launch. Maybe, maybe you don't invite them right away. Maybe you just have them do the eight day experiment. And at the end of the eight days, you invite them into the book launch to say, hey, if that was fun, why don't you come join the book launch team? And we can invite them in and build our crew right now. So I'm going to stop right there. And, uh, oh, my last thing, I'm not going to stop right there. One last thing is I'm going to encourage you to do this right when we're done. In other words, pick a partner, call them right away as soon as we're done talking and recruit them to this mission. In other words, make a decision in the moment, act with courage, be bold, and do something right now. And, you know, before we leave, we got 13 minutes left on the call. I'm just going to say if you've got any questions... Let's clear it up right now because here's what's cool. You all are going to do the experiment we're going to write about in the book and we're going to want your feedback. So you're literally the research team for what we're going to write about in the end of the book because are we going to call it the eight day experiment? I don't know. Maybe we change it. Maybe we change the questions that we're asking. Maybe um, we're going to change the tracker sheet because we want somebody in this group to maybe help us make a tracker sheet that we can all share and we can work on molding the tracker sheet and we can come together and form this process in the next eight days that we'll write about in the book. So you'll have been part of creating something that could potentially impact many, many people. All right, that's it. I'm gonna cut myself off and I'm gonna open up to any Q&A type of deal. That, or we'll do a little Q&A. So questions you have or comments that you have, we'll take any of that for the next uh, 12 minutes. And uh, I'm going to mute myself because I have a whole circus outside my door that's going crazy right now. <laughs> Sounds like uh, I have seven kids outside my, my office. All right. So I'm going to mute myself and just anybody who wants to say anything or comment, you can either put it in the chat box if you want to do that. You can also unmute yourself and just chime in. Uh, and you could even, let me say this, you can chime in with what you love. You could chime in with a question. Um, or uh, anything that you want to say that might just add to the quality of our call. And I also want to recognize, by the way, Wendy, I didn't give you a shout out yet, but thank you for joining. We're glad that you're here. And uh, I know we have a number of people who've joined in via phone that I can't see on video. So I just want to say welcome to all those folks that I can't see you. We're glad you're here. We have 23 people on the line right now. And I just want to say, uh, everybody, thank you again for being here. So that's it. I'm going to mute myself and anybody can chime in. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Oh, okay. So this is Donna Lisa, and I have a great idea that I'm going to go ahead and implement tomorrow. With your idea is instead of one person, there's a group of eight ladies. We all work out together all the time, and I'm going to get all of us together to do this. Nice. Oh, that's great. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah I love It'll that. It'll be fun. It'll, yeah. They'll love it too. It'll be awesome. Lots of energy. Cool. Oh, thanks, Donna Lisa. I appreciate that. Thanks. That's great. Yep. And am I going to see yep. you next month in Austin? I cannot go to Austin. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Well, hey, then we'll just yep. see you in our launch group. That'll be awesome. Yep. yep. <laughs> All right. Yay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Donna Lisa, thanks so much for participating. Really appreciate that. Absolutely. I'm grateful to be a part. Yay. All right. Anybody else? Wendy sent a message, said thanks for having me. Anybody else want to comment or ask a question? Hi, John. This is Erica. Erica, what's up? Hi, John. Hey, so uh, I'm from Rapid City, South Dakota, and just uh, super quick, wanted to let everyone know that I met John Broman through uh, an organization that I'm heavily involved with uh, called Day of Excellence. Um, you're welcome to check out our website, dayofexcellence.com, just to see what we're all about. But John, um, because the Day of Excellence board uh, and the Day of Excellence extended family knows you, loves you, I'm going to share this at our next board meeting and uh, get the Day of Excellence uh, hashtag front row moment. So um, we're spreading, spreading your good word and all your wonderful things you're doing for the world uh, here in the Midwest. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. That is, that is awesome. By the way, guys, I want to tell you that Erica, I wish you were on video right now because Erica has a smile that lights up every room she walks into. She's literally, it's contagious. And so I'm, I'm like, I'm hearing you say that and I'm like, I want everybody to meet you at some point. Promise you'll dial in on video sometime or, or call in on video. I will sure try to. Thank awesome. You. So hey fun. guys, Erica, um, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Erica. If there's anything we can do to support you, in this move forward, you just let us know be, and, and share with us what's happening in the group, you know, progress, updates, questions, anything. That's really awesome. Thank you for that. 
I'll do that. And John, I want you to mark your calendar for 2019 and come and uh, speak to our group again for our 10 year. Awesome. Well, listen, Bex is on the line and she's listening. So she'll make a note of that. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, that's great. Anybody else want to chime in? I, I can call and tear on people, but I see Don. Do you want to jump in? I would love to jump in. I feel like the timing of this is so perfect for me. I don't know you, John, except through hearing Hal talk about you. I have been an ardent follower of his Miracle Morning for about two and a half, going on three years every single day. And I feel like this is just a great addition and extension to that. Um, and really, why wouldn't we want to live our lives this way? You know, it is, it is truly how I want to live my life every day. And I love that you're putting this framework around it and a format to it. And your spirit is just contagious, I have to say. So um, I'm excited. I'm really excited to be part of the team. It's, you know, it's one of those things that happen kind of serendipitously. Uh, the right moment, the right time, the right invitation. And, you know, that's, that's a front row moment, right? That's when right. That yeah. So, yeah, it's exciting. I already know who I'm going to get in touch with the minute this is done. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Don, let me ask a question specifically yep. to you, which is that one of the things we want to be conscious of in this process is that people can explain what it is. Mm -hmm. We recognize that sometimes explaining a front row moment could be difficult. And if somebody's like, I don't get it, that might be, that might be a tough way to um, get somebody on board by explaining a new language. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we did a good job today explaining kind of and breaking down what is a front row moment? And uh, would, you be, would you feel comfortable explaining the framework? Uh, after this call? It sounds like yeah, you are. I just yeah, want to ask I that question I mean, directly. It's part of how I live anyway. So, you know, it's familiar to me. I think, I think we all want to think about when we encounter somebody where it might not be familiar, how do we know that person to change our language so that they resonate with it? You know, if, if it is somebody we know. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Really good point. Yeah, I'm going to be really curious for all of you that as you articulate this to a friend, an accountability partner, or multiple people, Donna Lisa, that what ultimately that you do is I, I'm excited. I'm going to be excited to ask you what's making sense to everybody, and is there anything that's not making sense? Like, is there a part of the explanation that we might lose somebody? Is there a part of the explanation that people are like, I totally get it? Like, we want to be witness to when the light bulb goes off, when they go, ah, I get it. It's like, what did we just say right there? Like, what were the words we used? Or, uh, you know, we want to notice that so that we can share that with each other so that we can all then be better at explaining it the next time we explain it. Because I will tell you that, uh, you know, every time I've explained this in the last, this has been four days that we've really refined this framework we're presenting to you. Every time I explained it, I got better at explaining it, even in the order in which I explained things. Like what I realized today was that I needed to tell Nina's story first, because that's a great living example of <laughs> what this means. Then I needed to define very simply the mission. The mission is capture a front row moment every day. But then we're like, well, what is a front row moment? Right? And then we say, well, how do we train our brains to recognize these moments? Three questions. Morning questions, in the moment questions, evening questions, right? And that's that simple. So I had to think about the order in which I would communicate it so that it made sense to somebody listening to it. And I still don't know that we've nailed it, but I think that we're getting closer. Can I just add one thing? I, what I loved about this, John, was the front row moment can be tiny. Yeah. It's tiny and and how we honor in each other you know what for one person one day might be huge and we're feeling the hugeness of it and for another person it might just be something tiny but it's as huge as what our huge thing is you know so yeah well said yeah well said yeah we have to remember that right that you know i remember one time uh it was early on this is 2008 and you'll appreciate this don i was on a phone call with hal elrod in 2008 and uh, we were doing a coaching program called the Your Best Life. And um, what happened was I was a brand new entrepreneur. I had just quit my job. And I was talking about how I woke up this morning and I didn't have to drive to work. And I went to a coffee shop. And then Hal was like, oh my gosh, this is so fun to hear you talk about being an entrepreneur because it, I forgot that it's like, yeah, I work for myself. And in that moment, it was huge for me, but it was something that he did every day. And so it was, uh, it was great that he got energy from my sharing my front row moment at that time. So great. 
Hey, anybody else? We got four minutes left on our call. Anybody want to chime in? Yeah, hi. Ellie. Yeah. So I, I really love this. And I'll pick up from what Dawn said as well. I think the biggest thing is, is the smaller you can get the moments to count, the, the better it is. Because I know when I've done these kind of challenges before, the thing that holds me back is like, it's got to be a good one or it's got to be a big one. Um, and really, the smaller we can get them, the more likely they'll happen, the easier it is for people to identify. It just, you know, and, and the more you can have in a day. So, yeah, and I've already sent Sim a message and I want him, you know, do you know he picked up with his family and went to Thailand? So. Yeah. Permanently? Yeah. No, 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 like for, I don't know, they just went for oh, yeah. a <laughs> month, a couple of months. Or I've been six, seeing all the pictures, yeah. Yeah, amazing. So he's right in the front row anyway, so I think he'll, he'll be good for you. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> Gosh, this cough. Ah. Um, so Ellie, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to share, by the way, that what you just said is that is so brilliant is how small can the moment be that we could still recognize that being a front row moment? I think even the way you just said that is so brilliant. Like it's actually like a personal challenge to see how tiny that moment could be and still recognize it as such a powerful moment. Brilliant, brilliant perspective, man. That's that's a good nuance that's really important. Very cool. Right. Anybody else want a last comment or question? Um, I just want to just chime in um, and just say that the, it, the feeling is always a, a good feeling. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but every couple of seconds, Gavin has just come beside me and just kind of put his head beside me. For me, those are little front row moments that we just, uh, we just have. So... Um, so. Yeah, it feels good, and it's very simple at times. Cheek to cheek moments. Are you showing? Look, there it is. <laughs> That's awesome, Gavin. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for loving your mom. Hey guys, uh, I see a, another handsome face here. Aaron has joined us from I don't know where in the world. Aaron travels a good portion of the time. You might be at home though, looking at your surroundings, Aaron. I know you're muted out, but uh, welcome. I'm, I'm way late to the party, but I figured I'd, I'd click the link to see if somebody still might be on here if I could catch a couple moments. So, yeah, yeah that's on. awesome. Hey, buddy, we also recorded this, so you can, uh, you, we'll send it out, and we'll send a quick summary as well. If you don't have time for the whole thing, we'll send a quick summary. But, uh, uh, yeah, this is a lot of fun. Thank you for joining, Aaron. Aaron's one of our front row dads and, um, and is living life in the front row in a huge way. He, he and his family travel all over the place and do epic experiences. I caught up with Aaron in Whistler uh, when he had his whole family there. And I should mention this too. One of my front row moments was when Aaron's daughter sold me a backpack at a table that the kids had set up. That, so Aaron created this thing uh, with the organization that we were with, with which was GoBundance. And they created a, an event for the kids to be able to sell things. And then they taught them how to create a business and sell the, the products. And they donate a certain money to charity. And uh, it was a brilliant activity. And, and Aaron's daughter, who just can melt your soul with her smile, uh, not only smiled so bright that she caught my attention, but I ended up buying a $100 backpack um, <laughs> that I definitely did not need, yeah. but I love. But yeah. that is the best backpack I own now. So um, it is, uh, it's fantastic. We definitely celebrated that moment too. Of being able to, the, the kids had so much fun, but every time she'd pull that off, it was a, it was a huge success. So it was, it was, <laughs> it was so partner. wonderful. Yeah, that's cool. Well, guys, um, hey, here we are. It's four o'clock. I want to honor our time. I'm going to say goodbye for now, but it's only for now as we can continue the dialogue in the Facebook group. Um, you can feel free to reach out to me directly uh, anytime that you want, but I would encourage you that if it's something that benefits the group, to pose the, post the question there or the aha or the breakthrough. And let's keep some energy alive to where this book launch isn't about promotion. It's about living differently and allowing for people to experience that. Let's live the book. Let's live the book. Let's not promote the book. I don't want to be a promoting team. I want to be a team that lives the message that happens to have people get interested in the book. So real quick reminder, the book is, is getting done. We'll be in your hands around March 15th. March 28th is the huge launch day where it literally gets shipped to people. 
February 28th is what we're promoting. It's available for pre-sale or pre-order online. Uh, that's it for today, everybody. Uh, quick, very quick, Ramon, Emeka, anybody for anything on your side I'm forgetting or can we just put that in the group? We're good? Okay, excellent. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for your time and love. Much appreciated and uh, good luck with your front row moments in the next eight days. Thank you, John. Oh, hey, Thanks, you know John. what we should do? Hold on. I, I know what we'll do. Guys, this is going to be great. Hold on. What, where did you just go? Hold on. There he I'm is. Hold here. on. I'm here. We're going to do this right now. I'm going to take everybody, do your best to either smile. Andrew, you're not allowed to participate. Keep your hands on the wheel. <laughs> Jeremiah, don't take your hands off the wheel, buddy, unless you're at a traffic light. Everybody, give me one of these. Give me, give me like a full arm. One, two, three. Awesome. Everybody's going to be like, who's the jerk that didn't put his hands up? <laughs> the, the guy driving the car. Hey, listen, the deal is that uh, right there could be a front row moment. I just want to call attention to the fact that this is a front row moment and uh, we just captured it. So on that note, everybody have fun with your eight day experiment. Invite somebody, make a public de de declaration and uh, much love, big hugs from, uh, from everybody on the front row team. We'll talk soon. Bye, John. See ya. Bye, John.